Hey, it's Biddy Penny. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm doing 10 cards with one Dollar Tree haul. I grabbed this Goo Gone to clean up some of my equipment. I had someone ask me about different ways to clean it. I use an adhesive eraser, soap and water, or the Goo Gone. So I'm just showing you real quick some of the variety of things that I picked up, but I'll show you them all a little closer. Here are some envelopes I found there this time that I'm so excited about. These are perfect for mini slim lines. I've had a lot of people ask me what kind of envelopes I use. And when the card base is uh, five and a half wide, I just use A2, but now I don't have to. I am so excited about these envelopes and I'm glad they don't have like the security lining on the inside and they just fit the mini slim lines so perfectly. So there they are. The number says six and three fourths. I don't know about that. All right, so I thought these were lovely. I picked those up. I picked up some lovely stickers. Um, I grabbed a card because I wanted some cutesy animals. So today, guys, I'm making cards. Um, this is a six pack that comes with envelopes, but I'm making cards with lots of different styles. I thought these would be fun. These are uh, like treat bags. And I got some beautiful ribbon and some bling. I also grabbed some gift bags. And I kind of have a couple of different color palettes going on. I'm even going to make some masculine cards, some shabby chic cards. I really, depending on whatever your style is, I wanted to show you that there are things at the Dollar Tree for you. This coloring book was awesome. I was so excited when I found it. One, I liked the patterns, but each on the back of each sheet there's like these quotes and they're very cool um now this one it says mark twain so you know proofread would be my suggestion but i really liked that let's just jump right in i know this is a long video so the first two cards i'm making would be great for like preteens teenagers just i could see um kids even liking these these were my daughter's favorites. Um, so the, my Dollar Tree had Crayola brand crayons. I didn't buy them. I'm going to tell you right now that if I saw it at the Dollar Tree, but I already had it, I was not going to buy it. Um, just like I wouldn't suggest you buy things and that you use your stash. I'm going to use my stash too. But I did buy things because I wanted you to see a haul and I wanted you to get lots of ideas of what's currently at my Dollar Tree. Now I know all the Dollar Trees are different. We don't have any stamps or dies or any of that stuff at mine, but they did have the stickers. So I was excited about that. Okay, I'm gonna make like an acetate detail. And this is gonna be a pretty clean and simple card. I wanted to show you that you could make clean and simple cards with Dollar Tree supplies. This video was 100% inspired by a comment I got this week. Um, someone was inspired by the cards I was making and she really wanted to make them, but she said, I don't have any six by six paper and I can't afford to buy any right now, but when I can, I'm gonna make cards like this. And it just struck a chord with me um, because I understand we all have different resources and we all budget differently and do things differently, but never hold back from creating. And even these things that I'm showing you from a haul today are probably things that you can find some of it around your house. You may already have it. You don't even have to go to the Dollar Tree. But what I wanted to do is show you that really beautiful cards can be made with very simple supplies. You don't have to have all those stamp sets and dies. And, you know, I think that's one of the things about our hobby. I know in the five years that I've been in it, and I was definitely uh, swept up in having to have all the things, but I'm so excited that, you know, businesses like the Dollar Tree are jumping on board and, you know, supplying 
really cute craft supplies at a very affordable cost. I think it's brilliant. So, um, here I would not suggest using a wet glue for this on this acetate. It would be fine if it was on cardstock, but I actually think you would need like glue dots or double-sided tape to really make things stick on that acetate. I went back later after it had dried and it will pull up on you. So I, I'm going to go back and secure mine down with some glue dots. Okay, so that is the first card. And I just think it's precious. <laughs> and so does my daughter. And you know, that crayon that I kind of swiped across the back was just for a textural detail. By the time you layer everything else up, you can't really tell it's crayon. All right. So this is going to be a shaker card. Now I'm just using a plain paper, a white paper. So I decided to go ahead and glue some sequins down so that even when it's not shaking, if the card is standing upright, it'll still have some fun sequins at the top of the card and all around, making the background more interesting. Okay, so I just slipped that in the bag so that I can gauge how big I want this. So, you know, give yourself plenty of room on the top, bottom, and sides. So here I'm just going along the seam. And this is going to be, you could easily make two, I was showing you there, but this is going to be my shaker pocket. Now I need to let those dry, those sequins, since I used a wet glue. And now I'm going to make myself a stencil. I just want a circular stencil, so I grabbed a cup from my kitchen, and I'm using the acetate that my stickers came on. I'm making this so if you had like books, maybe that you had gotten at a thrift store, or you can even get them for free from libraries a lot of times when they're changing up their... I get children's books for free at the library or uh, the thrift store. So, you know, things that you're comfortable cutting into, if you cut this clear acetate like this in a shape that you want, then you can hold it over the book page and decide, you know, exactly what, what image you want and what it's going to look like. Okay, I didn't let my glue dry long enough, but I'm a fast crafter. That's just the way it is. Okay, when you're bending this over the paper edges, you don't want to pull the paper at all. It doesn't need to be that tight. You want it secure. You'll see I'm using plenty of tape. I am securing the acetate, but I am not making it tight, if that makes sense. Not too tight anyways, um, because I'm going to fill this up with sequins. So you could use as many or as little as you want. I just went ahead and dumped all of those in. And my sequins did come from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just using transparent tape, actually, that I got at the Dollar Tree. Um, not in this haul, but previously. So now we have our shaker front. Now be really careful when you, I was just trimming off some of the tape on the sides, but you have to be really careful. You don't want to catch that bag or else you're going to have a mess. All right. So now I'm just popping up. I really didn't need to put the glue on there. I wouldn't even suggest it. I would just put it with the foam tape, but whatever, you know, you can always go back to your cards once they've dried and re-secure things if you need to. But that is it. I only put three stickers on it and I'm going to tape this down really well in the back. And again, this is just securing the edges and making sure it's tight on the card base and it is good to go. We have a shaker card and you don't even have to deal with a bunch of foam tape. Yay. So there's my first two cards. Now I thought it'd be fun because lots of people like critters. So I grabbed a critter card and I picked this one because I liked that it was cut at the top, you know, die cut at the top. I also really liked the sentiments and I knew that I could cut the sentiments apart and the picture apart like this and kind of make the card my own. Um, and this tag right here, 
I know we just think like this is trash, but this is actually a great template for you. You can make your own tags like this to wrap around gift bags and stuff. Um, the ribbon on here, I'm just cutting off the little part that keeps it in the bag, but these are perfectly long strips to put on your cards. So I'm actually going to use a piece, an upcoming card, you'll see. And then I'm going to deconstruct the bag. Now, I really tried to do this so that I could get the maximum amount of AKA patterned paper as I could. And these bags will give you a lot. I even am going to use these center panels. They're basically equivalent to the two inch strips that I'm always talking about in my card videos. So I'm just cutting this down to be the size of my card front. And when you're shopping, like, you know, if you pick out a card like this and you want to use gift bags, hold them up to one another, you know, browse the aisle, see what matches so that it'll be coordinated when you get home. I definitely tried to think about you know, color coordination of items I was picking up because I knew that would give me more of a cohesive look when I went to put all of these items together. So I just popped those up and I did use Dollar Tree foam, um, double-sided foam tape. I love their foam tape. I've been using it for two years. I use it on all of my cards and it's wonderful. So I'm just lining this up and I like it, but that edge was going to bug me on the left. So I decided to pull in one of the sentiments from the inside of the card and luckily it worked like, you know, the sentiment works for being on the front of the card and who says that your sentiment has to to always be upright. It can be sideways, like just play, have fun, enjoy the supplies that you have and make them work. Um, I really like improvising and I think it really helps me in design. So I say go with it. All right. So this is one of the side folds of the bag and I'm going to bring it in and incorporate it into the inside of my card. And again, I'm just using the sentiments that came on that card. So one of the things, you know, sentiments are usually either mixed into the pictures when you're dealing with pre-made cards like this, or they're separate. You know, just think about different things like that when you're looking. Let's say you're not going to the Dollar Tree, but you want to use some of these ideas. Maybe you have a box of cards. You don't know what to do with them. You don't want to throw them away, but... You know, somebody's given you some nice cards, but they just sit in a box. Maybe you could go through that box and give those cards a second life using these kinds of ideas. So, you know, again, you don't have to go to the Dollar Tree and buy new cards. You might already have some at home and you'll feel better if you get to get crafty with them and give them a second life. You won't feel bad about throwing them in the trash or keeping them in a drawer for two years. <laughs> So just think about what you have at home. You know, if you have gift bags at home, you don't need to go to the Dollar Tree and buy a gift bag. I didn't have any. <laughs> this gift bag, I love Geometrics, and I thought this would be so perfect. I thought of my husband right away with this design. And so I grabbed it, and I wanted to make it a couple of masculine cards. So I just cut it apart, and again, Right now, I'm just using that uh, center fold of, well, I guess it would be the side fold of the bag. And I cut that down to be my card base size. Now, it's heavily creased here, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to take the ribbon from the top of the bag, and I'm just going to tape it down and run it across that crease. And nobody even knows any the wiser. Like, people are just not even going to know, Right. And if you want to get really swanky, you could buy two of these bags and you could put somebody's gift in it and then make a matching card. And yeah, you know, just use your creativity. 
So here I am using this little template I had made with the glass, just tracing around it. Obviously, if you have dies, you could use dies and get a perfect circle. This one's not a perfect circle. Okay, I've never been good at tracing around things. <laughs> but that's okay. Again, I'm not worried about it. I just rough up the edges with my scissors. And I really wanted to put these plants on it. My husband's nickname is Dr. Shrub. So um, knowing that I was making this card thinking of him, I just really wanted to put one of these leaves on it. And what I'm doing right now is cutting out the plastic. Like I, you saw me cut off the stem and now I'm just trimming down that inner plastic to help, you know, lower the profile. Then I'm going to use double-sided tape to tape this down. So if I were on a tight budget, there's a couple of things that I would do that I wanted to share with you guys. I wanted to share some ideas with y'all today. Because when I first started card making, I was on a very tight budget. Um, so here I'm just hand lettering a sentiment. If you don't have any stamps, don't sweat it. Now, I don't particularly just love my handwriting and I didn't get a great start on this one. So I'm not actually putting this one on my card, but I will show you that it's, it's possible. You don't have to have stamps even. Right, so you could totally make that a thank you card or whatever, write anything you want on it. But I am going to use my stash because that's what I'm trying to encourage you to do too. And I have some alphabet stickers in my stash from a hip kit that just came in, and I don't use them very often, but I'm going to try to because they are in my stash. So I'm going to bring these in and use them and I'm going to spell out Dr. S for Dr. Shrub. So this card will go to my husband eventually for sure. Because <laughs> it's extremely personalized. Now I did see alphabet stickers at the Dollar Tree. When I picked up all of these, they had actually a few sets of alphabet stickers. So I felt fine bringing this in because I know you can find them there. You won't find these exact ones, but they also had alphabet stencils that would be great for building like a personalized sentiment like this size. So there's lots of options. But if I were building my stash and I was starting in this hobby, I wanted to share a couple of ideas about what I would do. I would definitely do it much differently than how I did it. I dove into this hobby feet first, wallet out, like ready to go. I'd spin, 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 spin. And I'm actually just coming out of that mindset myself. So I feel qualified to mention at least my opinion on the subject. Um, I would, if I had a printer and a computer, I would spend my time in the beginning with digital images. You can resize them. A lot of them already come colored and you could play around and figure out, am I a critter person? Am I a floral person? Do I like layering? Do I like plain and simple one layer cards with lots of coloring? And you could find that out by using digital stamps. I would invest in good certain products that are good because you'll have better results. So I'm showing you here, I'll get back to that, but this is an old art book that I don't dare cut up from the 60s. But if you have an old book laying around, maybe you've already cut into it, you could use your stencil and cut out parts of an image to put on the front of your card or just fussy cut things but I'm gonna make my own little front here. I'm just gonna doodle and kind of mimic the design of the paper so that it seems cohesive and it makes sense. And I just add a few little dots and I keep it extremely simple. And I'm just looking at it, making sure I can live with it. I did bring in a stamp set. It's one from a kid from, I don't know, a year or two ago. I don't even know how long ago. And um, 
I just thought this handwritten script was really nice to go along with the doodling. Those two things made sense. And then I'm going to put some foam tape on this because I am going to pop it up. But first, I'm going to bring that crayon back. And I'm going to mimic ink blended edges. So a lot of times you'll see card makers sponge around their images. Well, if you don't have any of that, grab a crayon. Go lightly. Just give it a very light dusting of color at first. You can always darken it up as much as you want. Let me bring it up close so you can see. It just gives that little added extra detail and color. So what else would I do? Yeah, I would make investments in like good tape, like double-sided tape, score tape. That's going to run you about six, seven dollars. I would make a good investment in my scissors and like cutting tools. And if I were to buy inks, I, you know, I would be particular about that. But for a lot of the other things, honestly, you can make your way. Like I have some stamp blocks that I think I got like 12 for $12 and they have always worked perfectly fine for me. Okay. So I wanted to make some shabby chic. Like I said before, I wanted, wanted to kind of, um, show you that lots of styles are possible. So if you've been here a while, you may know I love tissue paper on my cards and I was really excited to find this printed tissue paper when I was doing this haul. And I immediately thought shabby chic, vintage, um, layers. And so I picked it up along with a sticker sheet thinking they were made for one another. <laughs> So I just kind of make a ruffle there and I'm holding my stickers up. I love it when stickers are on acetate because you can hold it up over things and get a good idea without peeling it off. Now I'm using my double-sided tape here to keep my ruffle together and it's not perfect and the process is a little wonky, but you'll get there. And I like doing this if I'm not going to run it through my sewing machine. Okay, so another thing I would do is I would make myself two lists. I would have a fun list and I would have a tool list. So, you know, if you only had $20 a month to spend for crafting, I would make a list of tools and fun things that you want. And I would probably categorize them understanding what I might need to save from month to month and always still allow myself a little to play with even if it means going to the dollar tree or a thrift store or shopping your house <laughs> you know I would still have a little to play with and I would save so I might save $15 a month for a few months to get a great big tool that I want allowing myself that $5 for play money to get a new sticker set or you know whatever a pad of paper a lot of times you can get a six by six pad of paper. Even the hot buys at Michael's, if you have one near you, sometimes you can get them for close to that. So you could get a whole new paper pack and still save money for that tool that you really want. So that's definitely a way that I would do it. Um, you know, everyone's got their own priorities and different things and approaches, but that's just an idea that I had. All right, so I had taken a book page from a book that I have torn into many, many times. Again, it was free from the thrift store. Now, here's the thing. Watch the words. This book is extremely explicit, and many times I've just wanted to throw it away. But I usually find a way to make it work. And if the page is just hideous, I just throw it out. But, you know... I'm trying to get the most of it. So this is the six pack of cards that you get for $1 and you get six envelopes. Like who can complain about that? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> and they're beautiful. They're gold foiled and everything. 
So again, now this is very similar to the first card that I just made for you, but I'm just using an actual card base here and a sticker and a sheet of the torn book page. I'm gonna bring this tissue in. Instead of doing an accordion fold, I'm just gonna leave it flat, but tear off the edges. And it's just gonna add more layers to my card and more interest and really make that centerpiece pop out from the background. Now I do make adjustments to this card. I had a total afterthought, which had I had to reconstruct a little, which is fine. Um, so you'll see that in just a second. Another idea is, you know, if you have a wish list like a die cutting machine and you don't want to wait you know eight months of saving fifteen dollars a month to buy one you might put it on a list like a christmas or birthday list um, even if your family is is not able to purchase something like that for you, you might say well maybe you guys can go in on it together you know um pull together and get me this die cutting machine <laughs> But you can do so much with very simple supplies and you can make beautiful cards. And I really feel like some of my most creative cards came when I had fewer supplies. Um, I have a little box of cards that were my first ones I made and I go back and revisit it sometimes and I'm amazed by the creativity and how I expressed myself with scissors and paper and some glue so you know I just encourage you to play think about the materials you have around you if you have a shirt or a dress that your doesn't fit you anymore you're ready to get rid of it you're thinking about donating it to a charity you might think of it and how you could use it in your card making um, you know, if it has a lace trim on it, something like that, you might give that shirt or dress a second life in your craft room. So there's a lot of places that we can pull things from. Um, it's really quite fun to, to source your materials from different places. Cause I think it gives a really eclectic feel and it definitely is handmade and that's special. So yeah, I wanted to add this ribbon. So I had to rip up that sticker, then I taped it down to a book page and then popped it up. And that's more of what I wanted. And now I am gonna bring in glue dots to adhere this bow down. Yay. And I, I, w I know I was busy talking, but I did cover up the hallmark on the back of that card, so they don't even have to see all that. Okay, I wanted to give you guys a mixed media option, which, you know, coloring a book like this, I would consider complete torture for me personally. Maybe if I could watercolor it. Yeah, if I could watercolor it, it'd be cool. But if I had to sit down with pens, crayons, markers, it would be like a torturing device. So I'm not going to do that. You could do that. If you enjoy that, go for it. I just know me and that that's not what I would enjoy. So I'm going to show you what how I use this kind of paper and how I would enjoy it. Now, like this rose paper, you don't have to do anything. That is absolutely beautiful. And because this is an eight and a half by 11 coloring book, you could just cut that in quarters and have four card fronts and call it a day. It's beautiful. But I am going to do mixed media with it. I wanted to inject some color. So I brought in three different acrylic paints. I wanted to show you any brand 
of basic acrylic paint is fine. They do have some at the Dollar Tree. I didn't buy it because, well, one, I knew I had lots of it at home. So I don't need to spend even a dollar on more acrylic paint. And I know I love what I have and I didn't want to experiment with what they had. Also, if you're in a Michaels, Walmart, um, Hobby Lobby, you can get the Apple, Apple Barrel for 50 cents a bottle. So, you know, you don't only have to shop at the Dollar Tree for dollar products. So I'm just spreading three colors around. I want to show you how this yellow makes this design really pop versus that purple. Just a big difference. So you will get different results depending on the opacity of the paint and the colors you choose. Things like that will give you different variables. I'm going to do a little bit of a rainbow on this one. You can be as deliberate with this stuff as you want to be. I'm just doing a quick and fun process. So let all of that dry and then I'm going to fussy cut. And since I painted this paper this way, I don't have a white border or anything and I don't have to get really um, particular in my cutting. I just gave it a rough cut. And I will cut out these little detailed leaves. And then this, I'm showing you, it's curling a little, but that's okay. Depending on the tape you use, how you use your adhesive, it won't matter. So I'm actually gonna use that curled up piece because I want you to see this project is not ruined because of that. You could, of course, if you had the time, you could flatten that under like a pile of books or something. You could do a whole bunch of these sheets. You could do the whole um, coloring book in one go and then flatten them. I'd put wax paper between them, but um, I just find if you just use tape around the edges, you'll be fine. I was showing you here, this is where you could bring in a sentiment from the coloring book. Um, if you have a printer, you know, print up your sentiments. You can type anything you want and print it in black and white. You don't even have to have color. Most people, including myself, stamp in black on white paper to get your sentiments anyways. <laughs> okay, so I thought this paper was loud and proud, but it would be good with the, the feather. I'm going to make a slimline card because, again... You can even make all the latest trends without the supplies. I just cut this down to three and a half, and then the paper is already eight and a half wide, which is perfect for a slim line. I just trimmed off the little bit of roughness that was there. I'm making this feather my focal point, and then I'll bring in these little leaves. And these were actually the little scrap pieces, not even the whole leaves I cut out but I liked that they had two straight edges, so I popped them in the corner of my card. So yeah, if I was starting out or I had a limited budget, I would spend my time being very resourceful and discovering my style and not getting too wrapped in, up in having to have anything in particular. Um, until I knew what it was in particular that I really enjoyed working with. Like, do you really enjoy working with stamps? Or do you just really like working with paper and textiles? Do you like working with paint? Those are the kinds of things that I would spend myself, <clears throat> sorry, spend my time discovering before I made any major investments. Oh, if I could have talked to myself five years ago. <laughs> Oh, anyways, you know, even if you have an unlimited budget and resources are open to you to craft to your heart's delight, I would still suggest doing an exercise like this. 
because there's a lot of self-discovery to be found doing this kind of project. And, you know, there's a lot of creativity to be unlocked. If you're feeling stuck or tired (laughs) of doing the cards the same way, try a project like this and see if that helps. Okay, I would definitely paint my paper first and then stamp on top of it, but, you know, I didn't think I wanted purple paper until I had my sentiment stamped down. And guys, this is like my weakness. I cannot double stamp very well. I think it's because I'm so shaky. I'm just terrible. Like when I have to go back over something and stamp it a second time because I didn't get a good impression the first time, uh, 99% of the time it never works for me. So I am queen of the micron pen, just like here, cleaning up my, my mistakes, <laughs> which is why I have a positioning tool. Okay. That card, you know, you could go in and bling it up and add all kinds of things. I wanted to use the new envelopes. And so I'm going to make a mini slim line. Another thing that I would invest in is I would spend $15 on a good ream of paper. And my favorite paper is Accent. Um, They have a white cardstock that is incredible. You can get it in different weights. I would just get like the 80 or 100 pound weight. You can get a full ream for $15 and it's just as good as Nina. Nina. Solar white. That's like $50 a ream. I know y'all have heard me say this before, but like, girl, if you can get a ream of paper for a quarter of the price that gives you the same results, do it. (laughs) But yeah, I would just get a really nice ream of paper that has a nice heavy weight because that's going to give any card you make more of a professional and quality touch. I do think your card base is important. All right, I'm adding some foam tape in here because they didn't put very much, which is fine. Hey, I paid a dollar for this adorable sticker with like six or seven others. I'm not hating on it. I can add some foam tape. And there is that mini slim line. And I like the purple being on one edge, but not the other. I really think that worked for this card. It helps... Uh, that plant shelf, the other parts of the sticker that are not the truck blend better. I added this little thank you sentiment on the inside and that card is done. You guys, I know this is a long video and you've made it to the end. I'm so proud of you, but I really wanted to share everything and I didn't really want to break it up into two videos. So I just went for it today, but we're going to take a look at everything that I made and you know I hope you found inspiration here to use all the things you have you know when you see something this is where I'm testing this and I realize I'm gonna have to put glue dots down but when you see something online that you really like think about how you can make it with different supplies you know I know acetate right now is so popular But at Stampin' Up, it's like $15 for three sheets of it. This was a dollar for 25 bags. Plus, you can use them for lots of other things. And you get a similar look. You You get the idea, right? So we have a shaker card. I love it. So fun. And these little piggies. So if you like critters, but you can't afford a lot of critter stamps, like I said, Look at children's books. You'll find critters. Some masculine cards. They don't have to be just masculine. I love this card. I would love it if someone gave me this card. (laughs) It would need to say Mrs. Shrub, but (laughs) you know. (laughs) And I'm showing you how low profile that leaf is. And this one's super fun. 
and I love that crayon texture around the edges. I just think it's such a nice touch. Chances are you have a crayon in the house. These shabby chic are fabulous. I know I could gift these to my mom. She's always using my cards and needing more of them and she would love these. And this one already has an envelope. <laughs> so brilliant. Things that I love from the Dollar Tree. Um, Mod Podge, tacky glue, foam tape, envelopes, lace and trim. Um, I love their stickers, of course, but like just stash building stuff. I love those things. Um, and I get them from there all the time. So this card is really different, but I think if I had added some sequins and different things, it would soften it up even more. But I just wanted to show you slim lines are possible. I did, after the fact, come in and add this bird, and I added a couple of sentiments from some Tim Holtz stickers that I had. Again, I'm using what's in my stash. I encourage you to use what's in yours. But you could type things up and cut them out in these little strips. The possibilities are endless. You could cut them out of magazines. There's really so much you can do. And I, I just love the idea of people using what they have. So here's our mini slimline going in our brand new slimline envelope. Yay. Ah, so perfect. I'm so excited. I honestly had to buy four boxes of these because I already have I already have a need for 50 <laughs> for donations. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and come back for more. Bye.